Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Best in Slot and I'm really excited to bring to you today some news on Surviving Earth. This is an upcoming paleo documentary. I say upcoming, take that with a grain of salt, it's probably still quite a ways away. Filming has just begun, that's why we just got this new news today. Uh, really excited to talk to you about this. We did first talk about Surviving Earth last year, but we finally got some new information. Production has finally started and hopefully that means we're going to find out more and more in the coming months and probably year or so at the very least, I'd imagine. So, what is Surviving Earth and what did we find out today? Well, Surviving Earth is a paleo doc made by Loud Minds. So for those who don't know, Loud Minds is the production company set up by Tim Haynes. And Tim Haynes is the guy who worked on Walking with Dinosaurs originally, and also has done work on Primeval and the Loch and all this kind of stuff. And they've released a bit of a press release. We're going to go through that and do some uh, side talking as well. So let's take a look here. Universal Television Alternative Studio, a division of Universal Studio Group and Loud Minds, the high-end factual and drama indie established by Tim Haynes, Walking with Dinosaurs, Primeval, the Loch, today announced that it has begun filming Surviving Earth, 8 times 60 so 60 minute episodes, and we're going to get 8 of them, and we're going to find out exactly what they're about in just a second, developed to be one of the most ambitious, cinematic and dramatic high-concept series to date, Surviving Earth is a timely production, visiting eight mass extinction moments throughout the Earth's history to see what the planet's past can tell us about its future. So that is, as far as I'm aware, brand, I don't remember talking about that. I think that's brand new information. We're going to have eight episodes and each individual episode is going to focus on a different extinction event throughout the Earth's history. And we're even going to find out what a couple of those are a little bit later on. Surviving Earth is a co-production between Loud Minds and Universal Television Alternative Studio and will blend location filming at 12 destinations around the world, starting now with New Caledonia in the South Pacific, with state-of-the-art CGI to tell the dramatic stories of extraordinary creatures trying to survive against all odds. Award-winning VFX studio Milk will be creating all the spectacular digital environments, landscapes and creatures that will bring the series to life. Now, I hadn't heard of Milk before, so I thought, you know, we should probably learn who Milk are if we're gonna you know buy into their CGI dinosaurs and stuff so I had a little look and they've worked on some really exciting stuff some really high profile stuff they've worked on two for example of my all-time favorite films in Annihilation and Ex Machina they're clearly working a lot with Alex Garland who you know I rate immensely highly but you know that's all well and good they've worked on some cool stuff and I picked out Annihilation because there is the creepy skull bear and it's an animal but they have actually done quite a lot of work with dinosaurs as well they did something called Dinosaurs in the Wild which was a one-off event back in 2017 and this is their most recent dinosaur thing so it's worth noting the more realistic approach they've taken here with the feather coverage etc they had ice age giants back in 2013 they had primeval part two and more importantly than any of this dinosaurs on a spaceship the doctor who episode <laughs> which definitely did not have a realistic look at its dinosaurs it is a doctor who episode but my point is that across all of their work they've shown a variety but i'd say their newer stuff does lend itself more towards the uh, the realistic dinosaurs and the dinosaurs in the wild images on their website are all actually really impressive so i'm pretty confident in the vfx work if they can bring that same standard and it's you know this is made by universal it's got a decent budget it's eight episodes i'm expecting big things in that regard but what's the story going to be sounds weird for a documentary but you gotta remember this is tim haynes this is walking with dinosaurs it was narratively based Thankfully, we have some information about that. From The Great Dying, all-time favourite extinction event name, by the way, always has been. From The Great Dying, 252 million years ago, when the world overheated and 95% of life died out, to a mammoth flood just 12,000 years ago, which plunged the planet back into an ice age, every episode will immerse viewers in a specific moment in the Earth's history and recreate the drama of a unique mass extinction event. Each episode is set in a very different world with a different set of characters and a different deus ex machina. Viewers will follow the fate of bizarre creatures in jaw-dropping landscapes and witness worlds where continents shift and seas boil. The lesson from these stories is that Earth isn't a benign paradise. Instead, it's a very changeable home where life has had to be extraordinarily adaptable to survive and indeed thrive over the millennia. So I wanted to have a, a stab at what these extinction events could be. I could only find six that I was vaguely confident on. There's four that I think are pretty obvious. Um, there are five mass... There's, there's the big five when it comes to mass extinction events, but two of them took place prior to the Great Dying, which is one of them. Um, and it says from the Great Dying, so I am assuming the Great Dying is going to be the first one. 
and that the flood 12,000 years ago is going to be the last one. You say that, well, that's only 12,000 years ago, of course, but we are currently going through a mass extinction right this second, based on the rate we are wiping out life on this planet. So these are the four obvious ones, I think. The Great Dying, the Triassic-Jurassic extinction events, and the KPG extinction event, which you may well know as the KT extinction. Um, those, are three, those are the three big extinction events from the Great Dying onwards. The other two of the five are prior to the Great Dying, as I say. And then, of course, the global cooling, flooding, etc., that took place 12,900 years ago and wiped out um, quite a lot of mammalian species. Those four would seem like a given. I struggled a lot with the other four, it must be said. I had two ideas, one of them the Carnian Pluvial episode, which was this huge release in CO2 in the mid to late Triassic, increased humidity, and that was kind of the start of where dinosaurs began to diversify quite a lot before things kind of went to hell at the end of the Triassic Jurassic event but that kind of spurred them on even further. Whether it was directly responsible for dino diversification is kind of up for debate but it's definitely where it started at the very least and then the and I thought that would be interesting to show you know the, the start of the variety in dinosaurs and the quaternary extinction event which is our current epoch Oh, we're in the Quaternary Epoch right now, and those initial extinctions triggered by the rise of humans and other factors like disease and climate. That was still tens of thousands of years ago initially. You could pick so many points throughout this period, frankly. But when humans first started to arrive, when humans first started to evolve and be able to hunt properly, etc., etc., would probably be quite an interesting one to showcase as well. There have been quite a few other fairly major extinction events. Um, the global cooling wasn't actually on the list that I found, so... They're clearly willing to go for smaller scale ones and larger scale ones. Um, a lot of them, a lot of extinction events throughout history are very oceans focused, very aquatic, and it wiped out a lot of aquatic life. So I'd imagine we'll have one of those in there at least, but I thought they probably wouldn't do too many of those because I think that would be diff harder to make interesting for the average viewer, basically. I think we'll see more terrestrial stuff. So I'm very interested to see what they'll do here, whether this six does make it in. I'd love to hear your suggestions down below. Let me know what you think those... Uh, those other ones could be in the comment section. Tim Haynes, showrunner and creative director, Loud Minds, comments, Surviving Earth is on course to be one of the most ambitious high concept series ever created by a UK indie. It has been years in development, travels to incredible locations such as New Caledonia, home to our first shoot, and brings together some of the most talented filmmakers and leading digital technicians to ensure that what ends up on the screen really blows your mind. And this is the exciting bit if you're this way inclined, more than that, however, it has a deep focus on storyline and script that we believe will elevate the whole viewing experience into something altogether more cinematic and memorable. So for those of you who were disappointed with the Planet Earth approach that Prehistoric Planet took, I adore Prehistoric Planet, that's not a slight on Prehistoric Planet, but it had a very different approach than Walking with Dinosaurs. It was much more like a hands-off documentary. There were little stories, but it was less of a cohesive narrative across an entire episode. It seems like this is going to go back to that Walking with Dinosaurs style. We're probably going to end up picking a few species for a single episode and follow them throughout the episode and see what happens to them. That's really exciting. It's exciting to just get a mix. You know, if we can get variety, there's something here for everyone. That's a really cool thing. It sounds like a really cool documentary. Uh, we're getting eight full episodes, which is loads. You know, Freestyle Planet had five, so it's good to get a full series like that. Uh, long episodes, talented VFX crew, exciting idea. I'm hoping they can mix up the... Like, I think ending every episode with everything dies <laughs> might be A, a little bit depressing, but B, has the potential to be a little bit boring. And I think the way to avoid that as best as possible is to not frame it as, oh, look, everything's dead. <laughs> the chance for new life. It's where variety of species comes from, and it's a chance to show how resilient the species of this planet are. Um, but yeah, really exciting stuff. Really excited to get new news about this. It's early in the year. They've just started filming. Hopefully we can get a little bit more information throughout the year, and of course I will let you know all about that as soon as I hear right here on the channel. Until then, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know what extinction events you'd like to see. Are you excited? Do you prefer this style of documentary to the prehistoric planet style? Definitely let me know about that as well. Throw me a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Want to be kept up to date on all the latest in paleo media. Oh, God. <laughs> and I will see you, lovely folks, very soon. Thanks for joining me. Cheers, much love as always. Bye-bye. Reaching out.